Meeting of the March 26th Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Um, there's four out of six of us, so we have a quorum. Is there any additions or corrections to the regular agenda? So be a table of the minutes from uh, March 12, 2024. Okay, we'll do that when we get there, though. Yeah, right? but yeah. Anything else that needs to get added or changed around? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, motion to approve agenda. Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, the minutes weren't in the packet, so agenda item number three. Um, we can't review those, so is there a motion to table those until the next meeting? Motion to table the meeting minute approval to the next meeting. Okay. Second. Second. All right, motion's been made and seconded to table the meetings until the next, or the meeting minutes until the next meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, agenda <coughs> item number four is Jackson Alley first edition. The rezone and the plat that we had tabled from our last meeting. <coughs> yes, so Madam Chair, I can uh, handle this one. Uh, as you guys recall, at your uh, last meeting on Tuesday, March 12th, we discussed um, Jackson Alley first and second editions. Um, we had public hearings for the plat and rezone for both of them uh, at that meeting. Uh, the Planning Commission um, opened and closed the public hearing. There was lengthy discussion uh, on the plats and it was decided uh, to table those matters uh, so staff <coughs> could reach out to Southeast Cass Water Resource District and the Diversion Authority to uh, inquire if they had any additional easements or any concerns with those plats uh, before the Planning Commission made a recommendation uh, to the City Council. So Jace <coughs> contacted uh, those two entities to request additional input uh, on the plats uh, for Jackson Alley first and second editions. He provided the memo which you received in, the, um, in your packet for tonight's meeting and then also the email correspondence that uh, transpired between those entities and Jace. Uh, and you'll see in there that the, the concern that Southeast Cass has with like drain 27, with the 150 foot easement that they use there, they don't have that same concern on this side of Horace because there are no uh, planned improvements or maintenance to the diversions, uh, to the Horace diversion at this time. Uh, and they feel like they have the, the requisite right of way area uh, in that um, part of town or, or along that diversion already and so the additional 150 feet is not needed. They did however ask for uh, a 10 foot private utility easement adjacent to uh, the property that they own, um, that Southeast Cass owns and I believe the, uh, the applicant or developer uh, made those modifications already to the plat, is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, to incorporate that request um, in there and then the diversion authority uh, discussed a 60 foot wide uh, drainage easement uh, for the wet pond, um, but the pond details already have it at 69.5 feet, so that would presumably encompass uh, that, uh, that area of concern. Um, so I guess if the developer has anything to add to anything that I just added, in short, there, there don't appear to be concerns from those two entities, um, but Jace did reflect the, the requests within that memo and then the email correspondence. Yeah, thank you, Chair Hawkalter and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Jack Dwyer on behalf of uh, the developer. Um, the changes that we made to the plat following the last meeting, um, we, we added the 10-foot easement um, that Mr. Croker described. We also increased the size of the uh, easement for the pond out to 80 feet to encompass the whole pond plus uh, 10 foot for access to the pond. And then uh, lastly, we reduced the, numbers of ac the number of accesses from seven down to four uh, to comply with the wishes of the Planning and Zoning Board. So I believe those, that was the extent of the changes that were made. Yep. And, and the four applies to Jackson Alley first and, and second. Those combined plats have a total of four access plots. And so with that, we'd Happy, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. 
So you said the 80 feet, that's, that includes the 10 feet with the, with the so, ditch? Yeah, that would be the 69 mm -hmm. what, and a half feet for the pond plus 10 feet for access. So, so it's like 10 feet on the back side near the diversion is what they're it, yeah, asking the 10, for, essentially? The, the 10 feet on the diversion side is yeah. inclusive of that 80 feet. So oh. it's gonna, they're going to share the embankment of the pond, but if they mm -hmm. want, anybody wants to put utilities, data, power, gas through there, they spots that one. <coughs> Any other questions? Was the updated plat in the packet, or was that still the old one? I don't think it. I do not know. I, I believe it's. it's uh, it didn't look like I it would was assume it's the old one. What's? Do you have a date on the the revised? Um, the revised one was three twenty. Is the date we have on it? I could show you the ones that we have. Yeah, we have hard copies here. I know Jace has been out, Lucas. I think um, I forwarded that to you today to your inbox just to make sure you oh, have Oh, sure. It. So, so the pack that you have does not have the newest version then. Okay. So if you, if you want to show them what you did, that's yep, yep. totally fine. That would be great. <clears throat> I mean, I can use my imagination for the 80 feet, but the, I think the four entry points would be interesting to see. So it's kind of, scaling is different, so it looks a little weird, but we got um, one here, two, three, and then four is right here. So we just kind of, a couple of them stayed the same, a couple, couple of them shifted, so anywhere there's not this kind of cross hatches in the point. So one, two, three, and then four, four is going to be here, which ties like they were the same size. Any other questions on? Oh, yeah. This will be there. Now you have the full pack. the plat and the rezone motion in one yeah yep and um, the comments that we just <laughs> discussed and the, the plat changes were for both um, Jackson Alley first and second editions just so the Commission is aware so we don't have to go through the same song and dance for both of them and the public hearings were already open and closed for for all of that um, at your last meeting so if you wanted to do the plat and rezone together for Jackson Alley and then Jackson Alley second that would be just fine and then it would be the motion would be to um, approve, deny, approve with conditions, uh, and then we'll just include um, staff's recommendations uh, from his last and then from his last staff report, and then to include uh, the changes that the developer discussed to the plans. Any other questions? So the rezone was from greens green space to suburban. No, no that was for no, the agricultural to. This will be agricultural too. The reason was egg to RE for Jackson Alley right, first and second. Okay. Last time we had to change the um, future, future land, land use map. map. <coughs> that's where you're getting confused. Okay, yeah. Yep, that's all done. Okay. Yeah, I thought, I thought we'd know that. Yep. So. Yeah, so for, for Jackson Alley first edition, um, for the future land use map changes, it went Greenway to Suburban. And then for Jackson Alley second <coughs> edition, it went from Greenway to Suburban. Okay. And those were approved. Residential states. Any other questions? Might as well entertain a motion. Ron, any other questions? Well, it, it says on the, on the request that they want to rezone from agricultural to a residential estate. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And the classification residential estate, is that just 
fitting with the size lots that were there. Here. Yeah, yeah, to easily comply. Those are pretty big lots. Okay, okay. No, I don't. Okay. But I'll make the motion. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'll make the motion to uh, approve the rezoning request as. To, and it, do you want to do the, the plat with it? Plat and the rezone? Sure, so if we can do them both at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And then it has to include that we can't. Um, include the changes that they made. Yeah. Right. And then and you the want that they can't session. commence until the off offsite infrastructure has been constructed and installed, right? That's, uh, uh, we'll have that conversation with the city council, and oh, that's perfect. something that's likely going to be included in the ID agreement. And the developer is already aware that they, they can't commence until the city has those uh, improvements ready to go because there, there will be no development without that. So. And, and the conversations have been, there's been multiple conversations with the developer too. Okay. Was there a second to that motion? Second. All right. The motion's been made and seconded to approve the rezone and plat for Jackson Alley first edition. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. Thank you. And then we have to do it for Jackson Alley second edition and then we kind of discussed that already too, I guess. <coughs> that was the second. Those second four or five lots. So, um, any other questions about the second edition? Otherwise, we'll entertain a motion for the rezoning plat. <coughs> I'll make the same motion to change the plat from AG to RE, and then uh, to also include the staff recommendations. Uh, oh, you said that's going to be taken care of in city council. She was talking about when you guys proceed, because I think there's going to be a recommendation for the development not to proceed until the city had the yeah. improvements ready to go for sewer and for 81st, but yeah. that will be addressed with the city council. With the same wording that we had from the first proposal. Sounds good. All right. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> All right, motion's been made and second to approve Jackson Alley's second edition. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same side. Motion carries. Um, number six is Sunset Valley. Give me a minute here to get to that. <coughs> Do you want me to start it while you open stuff? So? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, if you want to start it, I guess I'll just kind of tag team this one. <coughs> So the, Madam Chair, the next um, item that we have on uh, the agenda is Sunset Valley Edition. There's a, the applicant has requested um, approval of a plat and a rezone request. Jace provided uh, the Planning Commission with uh, his staff report. Uh, the staff report contains uh, both the plat request uh, and the rezone uh, request therein. Um, it, it, you'll notice in the staff report that Jace utilized the city's uh, new land use code. The reasoning for that is uh, city council has done first reading and it'll end up doing second reading on April <coughs> 1st. Uh, and so that land use code will take effect uh, upon that time. So if the staff report looks um, different, that is why. Um, Brent, do you want me to keep going or do you want to take over? You keep going here. Okay. So the um, notifications, Jay sent out agency comments February 16th uh, to the various entities that typically provide comments uh, for plats and rezones, fire department, park district, southeast CAS, uh, CAS rural, um, city staff, consultants. Um, my office sent out notices to adjacent property owners on March 7th and then published a uh, notice in the forum on March 13th and 20th indicating that we will be having a public hearing tonight in front of the Planning Commission for the plat uh, and the rezone. Um, the development itself is 50.57 acres, which is being subdivided into 138 lots. The applicant is requesting a rezone from Egg to R6 high density residential. Um, so some of the City services, Jace indicated, uh, sanitary sewer will be provided by the city. Water service will be provided by Cass Rural. Uh, fire protection obviously is the Horace Rural Fire Protection District. Uh, and then Cass County Sheriff's Department provides uh, <coughs> police services. 
There is uh, concern with um, a wetland based on aerial imaging. So part of Jace's staff uh, report uh, in his recommendation just indicates that we need to verify with the Army Corps of Engineers whether or not uh, there is a wetland on the property. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll do a wetland deline delineation um, determination to figure out whether or not it actually is a wetland. It's not indicated on um, any mapping. Uh, so Army Corps of Engineers will be able to tell us uh, whether or not there is a wetland. Uh, the applicant, again, uh, proposing um, R6, which is compatible with the future land use map. Does so that just mean that they would have the, wet, the wetland credits? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they'll determine if they have to do wetland. But if it's not on the map, I doubt it's a wetland, but... It, it, it's being reviewed, and I know Jace did ask, he pointed that out to me earlier today, uh, that, yeah, it, it just to continue having as conditions, so we just can review it. Yeah. So, so. Right here, too. And it's typically kind of your depression type areas. I don't recall if it was right here or up here, but okay. that's typically what they're looking at. Sometimes the Army Corps calls a wetland even just a depression in a field of wetland. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moving on with the, with the staff report uh, for transportation, Jace indicates that uh, Sun Valley Boulevard will be the main um, road throughout the development. That road provides two uh, access points and then um, access points in and out of the development and then 62nd Street uh, South has been proposed. That will uh, that is a stub street that will provide the third uh, access point in and out of the development. Uh, you'll notice within the proposed plat uh, that there appear to be cul-de-sacs uh, within the development <coughs> but uh, the civil design sets show that there's a center island which creates a loop that directs traffic flow on those so uh, there is enough space in there for uh, uh, fire department personnel equipment to actually turn around on those there it's not your your true cul-de-sac it's it's a larger area uh, so just know that um, when reviewing the plat, uh, and Jake <coughs> wanted to have in there too a, a condition that those uh, those loops maintain enough size or uh, radius so uh, fire trucks can uh, turn around in that area. That was another one of his uh, conditions. Uh, under the staff analysis, the applicant is again proposing to subdivide 50.57 acres. Uh, it'll be egg to R6. The for park dedication. The uh, park district does not recommend anything for any land dedication. Instead, they want payment in lieu of land dedication uh, in the amount of almost $700,000. So you can see uh, within the staff report too, Jace has the park board's uh, recommendation letter to the city council. So know too that the, for this large development, the uh, park district is requesting payment in lieu of instead of uh, any parks for that area. On the ponds. The next one here, uh, so you don't. Okay, so moving on, um, lot 29, block 5 is identified as a stormwater retention pond. In the staff report, there was a question as to who's actually going to own it um, because as it reads on the plat now, the developer would still be the owner of it, uh, but Brent just indicated that that is not the intent. The intent is for the city to own that um, parcel uh, for stormwater detention, which is similar to how the city. Uh, does other developments the city typically owns and maintains those properties to ensure that uh, those ponds are are taken care of <coughs> um, so moving you said that was lot 29 block five, five. Yep. yep and I, I agree with it because it's it is consistent with any other developments is we prefer to own those ponds lots mm -hmm. we're able to maintain them you know looking long term wise 20 years down the road we're able to actually still we're still maintaining the elevations and all that and you'll ma maintain property all the way around for maintenance typically just a general mowing unless there's an agreement with the developer for maintenance for beyond access. that so I don't sometimes run into that a little bit sometimes their access. expectation is higher maintenance and then there's the agreement with the developer of that maintenance with them so okay. if they want it beyond what we do typically so in, in moving on in the staff report, it, it discusses uh, the different um, zoning districts that are adjacent to this development. Uh, the concern with this being zoned um, R6 and the, the lots to the west um, are larger lots, but Jace 
um, references in <coughs> that um, these are larger lots on the west side of the development. Um, staff understands the city's attempt uh, to buffer existing developments, such as the one to the east of the property. I think you meant to the west, unless I'm looking at this wrong. So um, when you're looking at the map, just to orientate yourself, the left here, top of that page, left is north. To the far end is south. So this is the north two-thirds, roughly. And then the next, the southern half of it. Does does R6 include multifamily buildings? Uh, under, yes, under the um, old land use code. I don't know about the new one. Mm -hmm. I would assume it does. I can, I can look it up. I believe the intention of these is to have But for something like that, and, and I know that's, that's been a concern before with some of these developments, but uh, there would have to be a replat done because a multi-use um, building mm -hmm. wouldn't fit on one of these lots. So if you're it wouldn't fit. for like an apartment or something, Correct. it wouldn't fit. Yeah. Duplexes. Duplexes. Duplexes, they're going to be on smaller lots. Like okay. from, from a development standpoint, they're going to put them on smaller Ty typically lots. Typically on a duplex, we'll put, have a setback, there'll be lots that will be mirroring in size, but there'll be a small, so Luke is referring to a smaller lot, but they're side by side, so that way they put the duplex line between each site ownership okay. on the property line. Okay. That's the most common way we've done it. I just want to make sure there's not some... Yeah. Not that anybody's planning no. on doing that. Our, our understanding is intentions. Our understanding <laughs> is intentions are all single family homes uh, for the product to be put in here. Can you can you zoom that? Yep. Sorry, I can't see and I can't see this either. And then to the north uh, on the 64th Avenue South. Is that good or more? Or I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, 64th no. Avenue. Um, is there is that a little a footpath going from Horizon Point? I guess it's not a cul-de-sac, but a uh, loop uh, onto 64. Is there a walking path there? or what? So there's it's, a, it's a water main, isn't it? Oh, wa okay. Water main. Um, there is a walking path here. Water main easement. <coughs> water main easement, okay. So. You, but you do see um, on the, kind of in the middle of there, yep. of the development, there is a walking path, multi-use path they identify. Oh, I, I see. I'm just wondering if there's, yeah. if there's somebody could walk from 64th onto this. Oh. Or if there'd be, like, it would be fenced off or, you know, what? Just I don't know if it'll be fenced off, but right now it's just designated as a eas water easement, waterline easement. Yeah, it, it so wouldn't be fenced off. It would just be an open area. It's okay. just dead People end, should so. not be walking on it, yep. so it's not a path. But we worked with the developer to make sure there was that loop there <clears throat> instead of another connection point so close to 66th Street on 64th Avenue to keep the traffic on 66th Street. Mm -hmm. So, for access control. Do you want me to open the public hearing? Not yet. We'll get okay. there. Um, I'm almost done. I promise. Oh, I thought you were done. So <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> just, just trying to respond to any questions that you guys might have. Uh, so, so back to the buffer. Um, Jace does indicate one suggestion from staff would be the installation of a physical buffer, whether that be additional landscaping, fencing, mounding, etc., in order to provide further uh, transition between the two developments. So, um, like if you look up on the on the top part of the screen there, um, what he's referencing is that side of the development, and then uh, the lots that are uh, to the east. So it's something for the uh, planning commission to consider. Uh, and I, Jace has that as uh, one of his proposed recommendations as well. Um, there's also a question on whether the Planning Commission and City Council will want an additional stub street. So something for uh, Planning Commission to consider as far as any recommendations to the City Council. Uh, as, as Jace indicated earlier in the um, staff report that Sunset Boulevard provides the two in access points in and out. Uh, and then um, 62nd Street provides the, the stub for 62nd Street provides the, the third access point. Um, additional staff uh, recommendation is uh, to require the applicant to amend the plat to change the title of the proposed right-of-way from Christensen Boulevard to Cub Creek Way, and that's just so they 
um, they match up. On uh, that, we have been working with the developer to the south and to the west uh, in coordination with that alignment, so that has been ironed out, I believe. Perfect. Um, the, the alignment and then the naming of Cup Creek Way in Sarah Christian is pretty easy. <coughs> And then the Horace Fire Protection District just wants to make sure that uh, those uh, proposed loops maintain the requisite uh, turning radius. Um, Horace staff and the city engineer met with Casserole Water to discuss um, water service to the development. And they just re request that uh, an agreement, a developer agreement be executed before the city records the plat. And that's what the city does with all of its developments when Casserole is providing water service. And then again, just making sure that the, um, there's no wetlands on the property. And then we can go over the proposed recommendation uh, after public comment, but that's, uh, that's what the, the staff report details as far as the, the plat and the rezone. So if we want to open the public hearing, um, we can let the, the developer or the developer's representative uh, provide any comments <coughs> or answer any questions that the Planning Commission may have. Uh, if the Planning Commission has any questions of staff, we can certainly answer those questions. And then if members of the public want to provide input, uh, they certainly can do that. And like I said, letters were sent to property owners within 300 feet, and then notice was put in the forum, and then also on the city's website. <coughs> Did you receive any responses to the letters? Not that I'm aware of. It, the letter just says that the Planning Commission will be holding a public hearing, and you're welcome oh, okay. to attend and provide comments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a overall site plan to kind of orientate us a little bit. <coughs> I thought I saw call if there was one in the packet. I thought there was one. It's split into two. It was split into two. That was the plot yeah. there. Um, there's kind of one on the first page of the staff report. Yeah. <coughs> I could give you the aerial if you'd like. Oh, yeah, do that. That might help. Okay. I'll scroll back. Explain up. where these other bigger lots are on the other side. That'll be easier. I did create a little box here. It's a little faint, so you can't see it too much. But the site we're talking about here is, you know, 66th Street right here that's being constructed. Uh, construction is up to about here right now. Uh, but that will be finished up this year, 66th Street. 64th Avenue is on the north. Then you have a Vistos edition here. Uh, so we were talking about some of those other lots. The north side, 64th, you have a few houses, and then just to the east on the little over half of the border there. Uh, Will Grove is the edition right down here. Uh, the first edition of Will Grove was brought to City Council last week, I believe, and it was approved. Um, <coughs> Yeah, that was approved last week. Um, we were talking about that stub out. Lucas mentioned that 62nd Street stub out would be approximately here. And your access points, Christensen Boulevard or Cup Creek Way, right in the very corner. And then your access points about here. And I believe right around this area up here. So there's some bearings there. What, what, you said the stub, where was that? About right on the cursor, it's right in this general oh. area. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that's connected to Willow Grove and for a future edition of Willow okay. Grove. They're trying to encourage that connectivity. They do meet the <coughs> two ways in and out, but giving them a third way in and out that isn't on the same street. So that was where we were coming from. Any other questions? I'm going to open the public <coughs> hearing for the rezone and the plat for Sunset Valley. Evening Commissioners, Brian Pattengale with Houston Engineering. Uh, we're the owner's representative on this for the development. Uh, like I said, just going to come ask a few questions. I'll give you a couple questions on stuff. Uh, I can confirm that little stub on the north is intended for water main. Um, what we want to do is, like I said, we have that sort of loop road. We don't want to dead end the water main there, so we want to tie into the existing water main that casserole water is put up there along 64th. So helps with the overall water service to the development in the beginning. 
Um, I want to make one minor clarification. There are actually two ponds on this development, uh, just so we can clarify that. Uh, that is uh, Lot 29 on Block 5. That large, larger pond is centered there. And then additionally, there'll be a smaller secondary pond on Lot 7, Block 2. Um, those will both be ponds, and the intent is that that will be owned and operated by the city ultimately. Uh, we are discussing maintenance agreements with that. Uh, the intent is, is that the development will have an HOA and we will have a maintenance agreement with the, uh, the city to help sort of maintain those pond areas as far as the landscaping mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, there will be an HOA, like I said, for the full development uh, in that regard. Uh, the uh, connectivity and then, uh, no, the intent is, I know there were some questions on duplexes. The intent is this is all single family detached residential style homes. Um, on the north side of the development is a sort of a 55 plus geared toward the 55 plus community. Um, so you're talking of their uh, crawl space home, single level, sort of geared towards an older, older retirement uh, type of community. Uh, there'll be a clubhouse located on block six there type of thing um, to clarify that. And then on the south will be your standard sort of you know, single family detached homes um, as the southern part of the development mm -hmm. um, uh, in that regard. Um, we have done, regarding the wetlands, we have done a preliminary office delineation with our staff and we don't see any wetlands out there initially. I believe that port was provided to the city, but they haven't had a chance to review that just yet. So we don't really have any concerns that there are existing wetlands out there at this time. What's going to be on Block 4, Lot 31? That, that That is going to be a community space for the residents as part of the HOA. So. Um, I have Tyrone to speak a little bit about that, but what's intended, but that is intended to be sort of a shared use space for the residents uh, of that area. Okay. That's different than the Block 6 clubhouse? Block 6, there's multiple <coughs> clubhouses. Oh. There's one, there's intended to be two clubhouses. Uh, the Lot 6 one is geared towards the 55 plus community. Oh, gotcha. So it's a different, little different, little different feel than the one to the south, which is obviously for, you know, detached single family residents. Mm -hmm. So like it's a little different feel between the two, the two locations. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, I thought there was only one when I was talking to Jace, so yeah. thank you for clarifying. Yes. So this is uh, pardon, uh, where Brian was talking about the other pond lot would be right here. Okay. So you have a reference point. That's for the 55. Uh, no, pond lot. Oh, pond. sorry, yes. yes. The clubhouse would be to the north yeah. of that. The clubhouse would be. Yes, so here. storm pond about. number two, and then number one is this big block five. Yep. Yes. Down here. So, okay. correct. Right here where it says block two, and then where it says block five right yeah. there. That's the, those are the two pond lots. The, the plan would be to assess HOA fees to the residents then to maintain these. To maintain the clubhouses, and yes, correct. And if I may, uh, on the active adult community side, that will grass, snow uh, for the yards will be all taken care of as oh, well, which okay. is all part of the okay. HOA. So it's, it's, completely, it's a complete complement on that side of it. Yeah. And on the heritage side as well, uh, there'll be some public areas like we mentioned earlier uh, that'll be taken care of by the HOA. I also have a booklet here just to make it a little bit easier to kind of visualize our visual, because you're hearing this for the first time. I would love to be able to pass this to you if you sure. wish. Yeah. To have a look at it. <clears throat> so one thing I do want to point out too, uh, if you're looking at the <coughs> the right of, right aways here, why they look a little funny, like they're a little wider, is my understanding, Brian and Tyrone will correct me if I'm wrong, is Thank uh, you that there would be some landscaping in the middle there. Correct. Some of these there. So that's why you see the road width plan road with it's like where it's at Sun Valley, that's why it's wider there, is that they would have some landscaping in between or some boulevard feel. Um, that is one of those that did throw us off a person in conversation with them. Uh, with Tyler and Brian, they pointed that out to us. And it, it, the intent is there'll be an island in the center of the, the long way there, so you'll still see your sort of standard with streets on the side, which will have a central island there. Um, as you can see on the plat, we kind of have a multi-use path. <coughs> out. It'll be a good mid-block crossing for uh, the pedestrian safety and stuff. Is that where you're able to get across? Helps traffic calming a little bit as well. 
Um, so it really helps deter speeding through the development, uh, as well as sort of finding some visual interest to the to the development. Mm -hmm. And their expectation is to do this privately, and then once constructed, it would have to go through uh, city inspections and whatnot. Sure. But construct it privately, and then uh, the public infrastructure would it would be turned over to the city for mm -hmm. public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> One of the things that we're very excited about is creating the diversity of this project. Being able to have people that are first time home buyers all the way to people that are retired. To be able to have that ability to have that all encumbered into this, this boutique type development. So we're really excited about that along with the trails that we've created, uh, along with the amenities. So we're, uh, we're very, very excited as to how this is coming together, for sure. Would the, would the plan be to, to sell the lots to uh, contractors for a house building or would you be um, offering construction services in, as a development? Well, from the development, we'll be selling it to Heritage Homes, who's the builder, <coughs> building okay. all the homes out. So everything's kind of consistent. So they'll, they'll essentially be building. Correct. They're, they're, I have I heard a fair amount of, of uh, complaints about in uh, the um, high density areas where you have homes that are exactly the same in rows, so it looks sure. like rural houses. Now, I, I think people <coughs> need to have housing and they need to have it affordable. Correct. But uh, we, um, I, I think you'll find that's a very great question, and that's one of the things that uh, that I think you'll notice in the in the brochure that we've given you that the plans, they, we Heritage has never built the same plan twice. You know, so the, the elevations will be will be different and very complementary. Uh, throughout the whole uh, mm -hmm. project, but very unique. A point of clarification: I know I know we're zoning this R six, which is technically high density. <coughs> yeah. Uh, but that's mainly because of the way the zoning code and the lots work out. These lots are all kind of unique shaped. A lot of them are sort of pie shaped or wedge shaped. Um, they're very big lots. They're they're drastically larger than what you would need for your minimum sizes on an R six lot. They're sure. you know two to three times the size of what an R six lot is. But with that zoning of R6, it gave us <coughs> flexibility in how we laid out the lots, and so it's not a sort of cookie-cutter grid street. It allows us that flexibility to sort of lay out these different layout lots and still meet that sort of minimum lot width up at the front, but the lot of lots will get wider as you go back, which is where you're setting your homes are typically. Sure. So like I say, it's, it's a little bit of a misnomer with the R6 zoning being high density. <coughs> We're on a density that's well below what the maximum allowable density is under that zoning with the lot we have. I had a question. So in here it says that the sale price is five hundred fifty, starting at five hundred fifty thousand. So that includes land with special assessments. Yes. So it's all in, all yes. inclusive. Yeah. Awesome. As it's very excited about that. Yes. Yeah. Our goal is actually four nine nine nine, but we're, <laughs> we're trying to be conservative here. But uh, that, that's our goal. We want to make this affordable and be able to have that diversity. I, I will say I've seen Heritage Design, and they do have a wide variety of housing price points and stuff. So I have seen that. In, in, in Sunrise Point, where you've got the little island kind of in the middle there, at least in the render. Yes. Um, you, you obviously, fr from this map, it's not clear you could drive a fire truck around there. But in this map, it looks like it's. it's Correct. Yeah, the there <coughs> should be able to drive a fire truck around. It, it's a little deceptive. Like I said, we, we are you know cul de sacs are a contention a point of contention with a lot of public works departments and in general with some people. Yeah. Um, so yes, instead of having your traditional like just big bulb at the end, these are sort of a loop road more so. Yeah. Um, there will be a central island which will like I said be landscaped. Um, one, those are nice. Like I said, it'll provide snow storage in the winter. It provides some green space. Uh, you know, you don't have as much issues with that. But yes, those those are sized appropriately to provide a uh, recommended fire yep. turnaround and, and through call to sack as far as the compliance with the uh, international fire code. Yep. <coughs> I don't know if I missed it earlier, but when we were talking about those paths, that they weren't to be used. It looks like they are intended to be used. Or were you talking about a different path? On the north. That was the, the north was not a path, it's main. just a water main easement. Okay. There are <coughs> paths that are designated on the plat wherever it says multi use path. It's, okay. it's probably a little easier to see in this one. Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know what page it 
in the site map. She's got a site map, yeah. but that's a little easier to see the overall thing. Is there a sidewalk along 66 on the right side? Or planned to be? I believe there is one planned to be on the west east side of 66. And we will talk <coughs> about that as part of, a, like I said, there's, you can see on the plot up there that multi use path comes off Sunset Valley. That is intended to tie into the multi use path on the east side of 66. I think there's another one connection point a little further south. It doesn't show up very well on that PDF that's up on the screen, but there is another connection point as well. So there, so there is one plan? There's a sidewalk on east of 66. Sidewalk east of 66 here. Yeah, mm -hmm. the tying in those sidewalks. I believe there's a sidewalk, there's a path on the west side. Sidewalk, I'm not sure. Apologies, I don't know the exact design for 66 there. I believe there's something, there is one on there. I don't think there's a path on both sides. I think there's a path on the east side. Yeah. I'd have to confirm with Jim. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if it made sense. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. From, from speaking on the south, south of Christians and Boulevard, um, you know, I spoke with Jim. Um, I believe there's a two eight foot paths that are going to continue on both sides, mm -hmm. um, all the way up to 64. It is on both sides on the south half, 66. It's just the north half isn't constructed, so I don't recall yeah, their design. I think it would continue the whole yeah. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know why it would change. <clears throat> Do you know how the, the um, length of the, I, this is not a, a conventional, you know, North Dakota, we're used to everything being right angles and laid <coughs> on, on a grid. Um, yeah, but the length of blocks, so without a break, has that been? A block so length, minimum yeah, block length. Minimum block or maximum block length. They broke it up with mm -hmm. the multi-use paths yep. and the T intersection on the south. Yeah. Yes. Correct. We, that was one of the feedback items that we gave to uh, the developer and their rep <laughs> early on was making sure that they're conscious of the block lengths. Uh, Julia is correct. That's why they're broken up. That's why you see the multi-use path breaks at certain points, mm -hmm. and why you have like the break here, where where these line up is to address block length throughout. Yeah, um, it's uh, so hard to compute to, on up with all the yeah, curves. Yeah, it's it was it, it got a little tricky, but uh, we did <laughs> check on block length throughout. Uh, like I said, that's where you see those different breaking points. Um, also, Jace did text me, he said, yes, there is a path on both sides of 66th Street. So, yeah. so uh, what did you guys think about the recommendation for the buffer to the east? Yeah, we were just talking. Oh, okay. <coughs> Obviously, there's utilities, and then we have to figure out what kind of buffer. I know Heritage Homes has um, uh, worked on the, the ranch uh, so <laughs> in the wild area. Correct. Is that sort of the same concept here? Um, they have a clubhouse. Correct. What was discussed as part of the physical barrier between Vistos? Jace just had his <coughs> shared use his comments on fence landscaping. Landscaping. <coughs> <coughs> landscaping, fencing, mounting, etc. Is all he provided. Yeah, and, and we will be doing a fence, so yeah, that we took oh. care of that. Okay. Yeah. Would that be similar oh, to? To the ranch that has a fence all that's the way exactly correct. Exactly. We we would like to request a slight change to that condition. Uh, we'd like to limit it to lot five or not, oh, sorry, not lot five, block five on that, um, because as you go further south, you get into sort of just ag land to the east. Um, 
uh, like I said, uh, if you, Brenton, can you zoom out a little bit? On so that? essentially, everything north of the, the um, pond. north, north of the pond, where, where there is a prop, where there is adjacent properties. Yeah, so like you can see right or adjacent here. homes. You can see right there that lot. It's it's hard to see, but it's north of the uh, lot 29 is basically the last residential lot to the east that exists today. Everything right. south of that sort of is ag land today. So we, we like I said, you can show you can see it right clean right there. That south that pond basically covers that last <laughs> residential lot, and then that north area is we'd like to limit the buffer to that since obviously it's ag land to the east. We don't really need to buffer ag land. Right. Uh, yeah. Just, just as a clarification, because we, you know, we don't want to burden the homeowners or any of the future about extra stuff that they may or may not have to do. Um, it just gets into sort of the permitting things further down the road. Mm -hmm. Is there a pr proposed height for the fence that you guys have? Six there? foot. Six, Six foot. foot. Okay. That's pretty standard. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? I believe typically we would encourage it to be consistent with fencing that we've had in similar area or similar practice, you know, where you have buffering or anything like that uh, for consistency. But that would be your guys' call what you would like to recommend and playing here and council's decision what you want to do there. But just as consistency with what we have throughout. Um, so you don't have like a white fence or something that just sticks yeah. out different. I don't think the developer would do that, but. Well, I would hope it would be like the, the Trex type material <coughs> that, that you've used before. It's actually going to be a little bit better. A little bit better. Mm -hmm. Not that that product wasn't great, but just because there's a, there's a component in there that gets faded in the sun, this yeah, product's not going to. Yeah. So we decided, you just live and learn from different products, mm -hmm. but they're both awesome products, and that's what we're putting up in here. Too. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Is anyone else here to speak on behalf of the public hearing for Sunset Valley? <coughs> if not, I think we can. So I can go over the proposed staff recommendations and then before the I planning. close the public hearing, it, or you can close you it, whichever you want. Okay, closing the public hearing. Thank you. <coughs> So the, the proposed recommendations, uh, Madam Chair, uh, the first one, the applicant owner developer shall provide a staff letter regarding the determination from the Army Corps of Engineers on any wetland determinations. Um, the applicant shall enter into a maintenance agreement with the city for all center islands pr proposed within uh, the right-of-way loops uh, and pond lots, uh, so any maintenance associated with those uh, that was discussed um, with the city um, doing the actual maintenance on the property. Uh, the applicant shall ensure that adequate space is uh, available in the proposed loops for fire apparatus turning movements. Uh, number four, applicant shall provide and maintain uh, a buffer north of the pond lot on <coughs> lot 29 block 5 to consist <coughs> of a six foot fence. Condition uh, five, lot 29 block 5 shall be rezoned to public facilities. Uh, so that actually will also apply for um, <coughs> Lot seven. lot seven, block two, because we'll want that to be public facilities because it's a pond lot, or both are pond lots. And then the final, uh, the applicant, or not final, but uh, number six, the applicant shall change the right-of-way dedication for Christensen <laughs> Boulevard to Cub Creek Way. Uh, and then seven, the final uh, development agreements with both the city and Cass Rural Water will be signed prior to the plat uh, being recorded. So that was uh, staff's recommendation um, for the plat and rezone. If you'd like, you can um, make your motion to include both the plat and the rezone in any conditions that the commission desires. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll entertain a motion. Oh. I will motion to uh, rezone from ag to R6, uh, high density residential. Um, do, you, do you want me to repeat all the things you just told me? <coughs> no, and then it would just be then to approve the plat with staff's recommendations. To approve the 
comply with staff recommendations. All right, the motion has been made and seconded to approve Sunset Valley with the staff recommendations. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. I know. <laughs> they knew I was trying to do I think it looks like a nice neighborhood. That's one of the things. Like, like, my office and like, from the room, just like, drop down my floor. Like, can we not do that anymore? No. The next item on the agenda is a variance request for 7675 Jack Way for the Circle K gas station. Yep. Okay, uh, Madam Chair, members of the commission, uh, the next item we have is a variance request for a sign uh, or for signs located at 7675 Jacks Way uh, for Circle K. Um, the variance is to uh, increase the uh, amount of signage that is located uh, at that address. Um, notices were published in the forum for this uh, public hearing on the variance request on March 13th and March 20th. Uh, letters were sent out on March 7th to uh, property owners within 300 feet. Um, Jace's staff report contains the details of the variance request. The parcel is currently located uh, on lot four, block one of Lakeview Heights fifth edition. The uh, city rezoned that property to C1 commercial, uh, and also granted a conditional use permit in order to operate a gas station and convenience store at this location. On March 18th, 2024, the City Council adopted a new land use ordinance. Not quite. The City will adopt on April 1st. Uh, and so, again, using uh, the new land use code uh, for this, this application request. <coughs> Notices were, um, again, sent out. Under Jace's uh, staff analysis, uh, it was discovered that the total allotment of wall signage under the newly proposed land use ordinance is in compliance with uh, this applicant's request for signage. However, the applicant has included a proposed freestanding sign that is far in excess of uh, the new land use code requirements, which for uh, freestanding signs, it's limited uh, to 80 total square feet. Uh, the applicant's proposal is for a 35 foot tall by six foot nine inch wide freestanding sign uh, with uh, or the math on that equates to 236.25 square feet. Uh, so quite a bit larger than uh, 80 square feet. Uh, the freestanding sign contains six total signs, inclu including gas price information. Uh, it should be noted that each individual sign meets the proposed ordinance. However, when you uh, add all the signage together, it exceeds the allotment uh, for signage. Uh, the applicant's uh, undue hardship for this one is because of the curve on the roundabout uh, by uh, 17th at, or County Road 17 and 76th. Uh, so a concern that uh, people will not be able to see the, the gas prices as they uh, turn uh, around the roundabout. Uh, Jace has in his staff report that city staff is unable to identify and confirm the undue hardship uh, from the information provided and would not be in favor of approving a variance at this time. If a hardship can be formulated by the decision makers, staff would be uh, supportive of approval of this application. Further discussion should be had by the city uh, planning commission and city council. Based on the facts and analysis outlined in the staff report in the provided application, uh, city staff recommends that the Planning Commission uh, accept its findings and recommendations in the staff report and recommend denial of the variance request uh, to the City Council. 
So with that, <coughs> Madam Chair, this is a public hearing, so we can open the public hearing. Uh, and then any questions, comments, yeah. we can go from there. We will open the public hearing for the variance of 7675 Jack's Way, the Circle K gas station sign. Thanks, Madam Chair. Appreciate it. Ben Woodside here. So um, I own the gas station there, the proposed gas station. And um, I do have images if you guys want handheld images. I think we have most of one. They should be in the packet. Yeah, I think we yeah. have them. Oh, I'm so sorry, sorry Ben. Try to get it on the screen here. So. Oh. There is. Thank you. Page right, six. Right of 10. Got yeah. it. I didn't, I didn't remember over the images, but they are included. Yeah. So, uh, Lucas, just on that sign area, it's approximately 145 square foot of signage on that on that um, standalone sign. I think someone commented on over 200. Uh, yeah, I did. It, so, is it? Because in here it's 35 feet by six feet nine inches. That's probably not accurate then. Yeah. So that the actual sign area itself is 145. Okay. Uh, square feet. So. Um, this is holiday, so it's holiday Circle K. Holiday got bought out by Circle K about seven years ago, and now they're implementing, you know, they're inter implementing their signage and their standards. Uh, this signage is Circle K slash holiday now standard MID si sign. Um, on these standard signs, as Lucas talked about, um, we display multiple tenants, which is ourself and also the liquor store that's going to be attached. Um, we display our um, EMC, which is our electronic messaging center on the sign. And that's important for our customers to see different deals, discounts, um, what's going on in the store, lottery. Uh, that's, it's a messaging center that's on this sign as well. And then, you know, most importantly, um, as, it, as you all know, fuel, we have a price sensitive product here, which is fuel and petroleum. <coughs> so um, we need to be able to dis display and show our fuel prices. And more often than not, it's unleaded in diesel. And so um, we're asking to be able to display those <coughs> fuel prices on this MID sign. Um, it's the standard sign now, and that's typically what is implemented um, you know throughout all new developments with holiday circle K so if there's you know any questions um, relate into the sign but that's pretty much the standard on how things are and you know we want we have some price sensitive information that we want to put on there as well as the tenants which is ourself and um, the liquor store, but also notification in a in an ancillary sign face of a car wash too. So, the Circle K, <coughs> these um, the signs, at least the big Circle K on the top, come from from corporate, I assume. Correct. So I just want to reiterate: as of right now, it's a holiday. Right. So, so all their signage right now, whenever they push out a new development or a new store, <coughs> it's, they're attaching Circle K to all their product. Mm -hmm. As of right now, this market is all holiday. It hasn't changed yet. So it may be a holiday instead of a... a it Circle would say K. holiday. It would be holiday. And along that sign, there's, you know, blue, lot, br sure. blue rod like holiday has it. Yeah. And that won't change. But the sign itself currently is a holiday okay they but just the question is still the same it comes from corporate correct and do they give you a range of signs <coughs> sizes of signs for you to put up old holiday used to they used to be able to have monument signs and you know shorter signs now this is the standard um circle k sign because holiday follows circle k now and this is the standard size that they have for their standalone sign. Okay, How far is, away what is our, what is our with, ordinance say? With the new math, are we closer? Well, what was your question? With the new math, are we closer now? We're off by 65 feet. Okay, yeah. still? So your, your cap is 80, 
And the applicant is requesting essentially 65 additional feet. Okay. And Lucas, you probably, will, I would assume you're going to have some of these different situations as that evolves, the sign ordinance component of the land use ordinance evolves. I think you're going to have a few of these situations come up because it's not going to be perfect. It never is. However, you know, the sign, a sign ordinance to the city is actually fairly on the newer side. And that's what I was going to ask Lucas too, because I, you know, during our whole development so far, I think this sign, new sign ordinance just came out or it's going to be approved soon. The, the city, the <coughs> new Monday. sign ordinance is part of land use ordinance. Next Monday, the council hears the second reading of land use ordinance. Uh, the city introduced a sign ordinance overall, our current one, what, about two years ago, roughly, uh, to get something, to have something in place. However, it's, it's one of those that we work towards having one in place and it evolves because we didn't have much signage in town before. So and and I think footage. that's still clear here. It's based on square footage. Yeah. And, and so you can only have six or 80. Yeah. So and this is going off the new regulations or our old ones? Yeah, I mean, the, what's cited in here is the, the new. Yeah. JC is the new for the signage there. Uh, because we're in our second Since we have the second right. reading right around the corner. So it doesn't items. matter as long as yeah. the square footage is. Yeah, and either way, it is a little bigger than what mm -hmm. the new one of. Is the there an estimate of the size of the KC sign here in town? I wish I could tell you the exact. I, I, I apologize, I don't have I should have measured it too far off. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't think these are too far off. <laughs> I don't <but. really laughs> see that. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, if, if KC's is here too, we, we know. We're just in a little bit of a pickle, you know, in a transition pickle where our team noticed it and was and said, well, we got to go and, <coughs> you know, apply for a variance because the new sign code that's coming out, we would have not would have not been granted it then, you know, with the current MID sign that we have. There are nuances of both the current ordinance and the new one mm -hmm. that would make us have to go through a variance approach mm -hmm. either way. Well, I guess I'm really curious to see what Casey's has now because I've, I mean, we should treat them both fairly, right? They're both the same type of business. Well, you give, you know, sometimes you have things that you take. Grandfather. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, I mean, I'm wondering, you know how the school has their sign where they can like flash things across? Can you get rid of like certain aspects of the sign and do like a flash across like car wash that goes across like in a light or to like make it maybe smaller? The <coughs> electronic messaging center yeah. is directly connected to um, Minneapolis headquarters. Oh. And so that's a standard on the sign where mm -hmm. any deals that happen with holiday, that deal is on that EMC sign mm -hmm. on every single one. They can't differentiate you know, Horus location versus Fargo's. I just thought maybe they could like flash car wash across the screen and then like Circle K liquors or whatever that says <coughs> across there. Yeah, it's just a standard plate, okay. face plate of the car wash sign and the other tenants on there. The, and then the EMC is directly connected to corporate in Minneapolis. Well, we, we have in the past talked about uh, there being a hardship involved if, if um, it's a franchise and, and the corporate office doesn't allow you, Dairy Queen to be one and, mm -hmm. and um, uh, that that part would be a, a hardship since, since the if we want to have businesses here, mm -hmm. they have to have their sign, and the signs only come in one size. Mm -hmm. uh, but my my issue with it right now, though, is the elevation, that 35 feet when it's supposed to be what, eight. Is that just not the? Uh, what they? The okay, height of the sign. Well, the bottom yeah. of the sign is. Sure. 13 feet off the ground from the bottom exactly. of the Pepsi and thing I, to I the know ground. the justification in the, in the uh, request for the variance talked about that you sell diesel fuel and you want to be able to 
have semis be able to see it from a long ways off because of the roundabout. <coughs> It, that's one of the reasons to have it as high as, as you're requesting. How, how many but square feet are we off from the what's the 16. About 65, 15. right? Yeah. If it if you said it's 145. Then yeah, you're about 65. Yeah, I got 145 square foot of our MID mm -hmm. sign here, so I don't know what the limit is for Horus. I mean, are they feeling like they want it that large because I'm sure like interstates and things like that but we're not really by a major that's a great question this is actually standard for <coughs> cities inner cities or cities okay. not interstate um, I have two of them in Fargo our <coughs> actual MID interstate sign is over 60 feet on um, for one of them and my one on 52nd is the same exact signage if you drive by there that's 35 feet so you know that I think this picture seems like it's a lot higher but when you drive by it it's I mean it's 35 feet it's not a 60 foot interstate pylon it's a pretty standard multi-tenant sign what are the speed limits over there 25 the speed limit currently goes up to 35 on County Road 17 I know we've had some discussion at council of does it go up does it go down to 25 or do we put a request in to I know to 25. the sheriff's office just said yeah. at the last meeting that they were recommending to lower the speed limit because and there's a lot of speeding there. And then 76th mm -hmm. Avenue going east west there is 30. So this hardship thinks it's 55 miles per hour. So what? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I'm looking at the right one. The so application the conditions and speed limit at 55 requires the sign to be taller and larger. Yeah, yeah. C CIS, the sign company, when they did the due diligence and looking at Horace, they took the, I think the speed limit from what they saw online versus actually mm -hmm. out here. The, the mm -hmm. speed limit on Congress 17, I've been here six years and it's been, when I first moved here, it was around 45 or 55 and it's just mm -hmm. been reduced. Every couple of years it's been reduced. So uh, when they did the roundabout at 76, 17, that's when they reduced it down to 35 south of 76. Yeah, I was confused right away too. Maybe that's what she was asking. I was like, is this located where I think it is? Because he's talking about semi trucks and 55 miles per hour. So I was just yeah, C yeah, C CIS, <laughs> they filled out the um, information on that and they had sent it in and I notice a couple errors that they sent in and one of them is definitely not 55 mile an hour semis coming through here so yeah if they made it through that call to semis i don't know what they were thinking on that Especially but not this morning. yeah well and i <laughs> under the city's ordinances for any freestanding sign along a road with a posted speed of 45 miles per hour or higher the maximum size shall be increased to 120 square feet and the maximum height shall be 10 feet so maybe that's why they Put that in the mm. application. Maximum height is ten feet. Yeah, for the sign. And right now it says it's eight. And my big my big concern as a franchise owner is, you know, I have to have the ability to display pricing, and this is their single standalone standard sign now. I you know we'd have to go back to the drawing board and because I I have to have the ability to have um, posted. Um, fuel prices and as of right now they don't have a monument sign that posts fuel prices it would just say holiday on it and not displaying digital pricing which makes it which would make it extremely difficult mm -hmm. sign regulations are 10 feet high standalone but I have four feet I have yeah, 103 <laughs> square really feet short. per size <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I thought I, I said eight tall. feet I mean I know guys that are almost eight feet tall yeah seven You're feet doing a monument sign maybe but it's yeah. for this type of one I, I I do see what you say you know the standard I think we all see that as a standard there I can think of other small towns where or you know similar sized towns of horse that with gas station they have sign just like this I mean, one that comes to my mind is what I believe Wadena, mm -hmm. and so it has one like this. So, mm 
Well, I, I, I figured 143 square feet per side for your signage. On each side, it's 143 square feet. Is that about what you said? Yeah, I said 145 was yeah. the, yep. Yeah. So. No, it says right there. It says on the yeah bottom of the sign there. You know, <coughs> as far as the, the height of it, I'm not sure which would be worse to having a, a, something that tall um, standing there or have the sign down lower and blocking that corner on the roundabout for people coming to uh, from 76 into the roundabout. To give you an idea, like a speed limit sign is typically posted or, or put up around seven feet above. Yeah. So from the top of the road up, they're around seven feet. That's why it seems high sometimes when you see it, like new projects around town or any of the mm -hmm. traffic signage. The bottom of that sign is that seven. And Ron, and Ron, to, Ron, you talked. Oops, go ahead. And Ron, you talked about visibility around that roundabout. Yeah. Um, and I came to planning and zoning meeting before, and we had to, you know, drastically change our plans and move our car washes because that was a concern of individuals going around that. Um, roundabout so I had moved the car washes to the east side so that there was visibility there where I agree with you if you have you know signage blocking all the way down to the ground that's kind of the same concept as you know having a car wash building that's mm -hmm. 12 feet high that I had to move for visibility purposes and headlights was there something with headlights Coming out, coming out of the, of the car, car yeah. wash, going into the yeah. road. Yeah. Yep. They didn't want the glare glare and the headlights coming off of uh, or f onto the roundabout there. So so what I was going to say, Madam Chair, is not to throw a wrench in this, but if, if the height is of concern, <coughs> the city council has not approved the land use code yet <coughs> during their second reading. Mm -hmm. So changes could be made to the land use code to reflect situations like this one because uh, obviously when you're looking at a new land use code like this and then you see it in real life then you're, this sort of thing triggers of well was the intent just eight feet and, and maybe it is but this conversation could be had with the city council before it adopts the land use code that's one one thing with this is like if you set up if you do approve this and it sets the precedent then you're kind of almost setting the code and that's why I don't I mean. want <clears throat> I don't like the idea to me a hardship is a hardship is not corporate regulations because then if that's the case then then what corporations are you following you mm -hmm. know if it's so big then we follow them but if it's a small one then well, yeah. we don't care these are our ordinances so I don't I don't want to go down that road um, so I, I in my opinion the best thing right you lost your screen the best thing to, to maybe go forward with this is to have a conversation with the city council. I mean, it's next Monday. You would recommend tabling it until city council. No, we would have to recommend mm -hmm. denial, right? And then, but city council. Well, no, we could table yeah. this, have a conversation with oh. the council. Okay. And, and that's, that's not making any promises, but it's a, okay, council, we ran into this issue already. That might and there's be probably the best be more stories and signs that are going to want to be put up, right? If the, mm -hmm. It'd be well, good to have guidance on this, for sure. Mm -hmm. Naomi can figure it out that way. <laughs> how high how, how high is how high is the Dairy Queen sign? <laughs> yeah, we'll just well, that's I, I'm trying to read because how high is like I'm trying to read the new like ordinance. Dairy, Dairy Queen is brand new. Yeah. How high is that sign is not eight feet tall. Correct. I believe Dairy, Dairy Queen they had to do a variance. They did. Yeah. Because they had but because was, the window signs counted towards their signage, right, yeah. or something? And then it was And that was under the old the old ordinance. The old ordinance, ordinance too, mm -hmm. so I don't know what they, they did. It, I believe they did a variance on that one to mm -hmm. allow them to be able to do that. And of course, the the man who knows the most about the new land use code is the one that's not here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we had to do a variance so. on headquarters too because of the size. Mm -hmm. But their total square footage was turned out to be the same, didn't it? It's just the yeah. Mm -hmm. the way it was counted. You, you, yeah. So I see where you have a couple options. One is you could table it. Like Luke was talking about, uh, the concern could be brought forth to the council of hey, the sizing within the land use ordinance. 
another idea, you know, concept, you could deny it, but it's up to the planning commission's purview there, or you could grant, you know, recommend approval of a variance uh, and using this as an example to the city council saying we're recommending a variance of this because you know, that and that helps spur that conversation too. Yeah. So I, I can see a couple different angles you could take, but if they do change the land use ordinance, it voids it. Depending on what the council decides, may not require a variance. You know, the the um, our assignment is to uh, <coughs> to assist the city council or mm -hmm. advise them, and and to to us, if we don't have a hardship, then we almost have to deny. It. Mm -hmm. If and you then, do a and then it goes denial. to the city council, and they can argue the finer points. Yeah, you could but recommend that, and then when you're giving for your reason, you could say, hey, "Council, we'd like you to consider these with your land use ordinance." So there's another I option mean, for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, and so that is fine. My my fear is setting this precedent because it's going to be every time. Everyone's going to be coming in here for exact sign variants. That's yes. why I'm saying we would almost have to deny because we we don't have a viable hardship. Correct. Is that I mean, a motion? I know that I'm very sympathetic to you and wanting you know to start a business and and uh, you have to have signage and all of those things. Um, but we're working within certain parameters and. Um, we don't have the power to bend those. City and Council it, has the power to bend. And from a timing standpoint, they make a recommendation to the City Council. And so we would still need to publish notice of a hearing in front of the City Council still. So from a timing standpoint, that's not going to happen until the, the second meeting in April at the earliest. So the City Council will have had time to have a conversation on the signs um, next week on, at its April 1st meeting and possibly adopt the new land use code at that meeting and then yeah it's just difficult for me too on the development side because you know we got thrown this wrench a little bit and we were planning on starting here you know asap in april well regardless but if but they, if they approved if they approved it tonight same timeline you okay right but you know if, if w this gets denied and there's no you know the eight feet is the limit it may be difficult to have a station there then you know i might have to find a different use for this then well it, you're not going to be the only one correct it, 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 and that's the conversation that we need to have with the city council of if eight feet is adopted we're gonna have a, a lot, lot of variance for right mm -hmm. correct yeah. um, <laughs> which is what we're trying to avoid <laughs> Yeah, like I'm not well versed enough. I th I think we used to have it at 25 or 35 feet. Like it was the highest it could be was yeah. 35. Feet. 30, 35 is pretty standard. In I'm almost positive that's what. And, and it could be in. It here could be too. something we just missed when we were going through all the edits. I think it's worth council having a discussion about the yeah any changes we want to make before that mm -hmm. second reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're gonna find some stuff anyway. And if yeah. we if we approve this one, it's just sort of kicking it down the road because then they won't have to consider those things Correct. at the city council. Well, if you if you table it, you're stalling it. it, it you're yeah. Stalling so honestly, the yeah. having to make a recognition right. tonight is yeah. better for your timing. If we mm -hmm. deny it, we force their hand. Because if they if they table them. it, then we're coming back here mm -hmm. instead of going to council. Mm -hmm. So we'd rather not table it so that it doesn't have to come back here? Right. That would be right. If, if that it'll gets desired to it so keep this So for your timeline, we, we should either approve it or we should disapprove it so that at least it doesn't come back here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if you do a denial, you know, you say your reasons why, you express your concerns of if you are concerned about height or any of those different attributes, it does help for us to relay that to oh, the council. Oh, absolutely. So. Now we'd want to mm -hmm. tag something for the yep. city council so they... So, so if it if does get denied... Just a recommendation. Okay. Just make a recommendation. Okay, no, okay. It, it ultimately okay. would go to okay. council. So the we're right, just, right. We're so just saying that under the current parameters, we can't approve this. No, I'm with you on that. I so the staff that. report that Jace will end up drafting, Brent and I will have a conversation with them to say, Here's the conversation, and, and he's listening now too and taking notes likely. Yeah. So he'll know too yes. of um, 
why the, the Planning Commission is having the conversation they're having, include it within the staff report with their recommendation, and then we'll all be at the City Council meeting on Monday, and then when this gets presented to the City Council at the second meeting in April, and we can have that same conversation of, this is the, the real world experience that we're having and the issues that we're going to have if eight feet is the max. We're gonna have every business coming in to this body and to the City Council mm -hmm. for variance. And so the city would either approve or disapprove it at that point? The second meeting in April. Right, and it wouldn't have to come back to planning then. <coughs> and we'll likely, like our request, and I'm gonna look too to see what the old ordinance says and then what this new one says in greater detail. I'm almost positive the old one said 35 feet. Like it said no It's pretty, seat. most cities it's 35 feet. It's and that's pretty standard. Because that's so. the highest that a house can be. Correct. A two-story house is 35 Correct. feet, and that's why I think the ordinance had it for signs. I so was really surprised at eight feet. I was <laughs> very surprised that yeah. sign is height of eight feet. So yeah. well, and, and my issue too is look around town. There's many signs that are way higher than eight. It right. might have been an oversight on. But either way, we'll I just need to look at it further. Yeah. I mean, we went through that thing so many times. I, I'm gonna. Make a motion that we. I gotta close the public hearing. Oh yeah. Okay. okay now go. Right. You <laughs> done? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna make a motion that that uh, we deny the request for variance uh, with recommendations to the city council. Due due to height and square footage. That they well, review due those. To, due to the the, the okay. current uh, signage ordinance okay with the recommendation to look further into with the a recommendation with recommendations from the council mm -hmm. about the, the height you know height and square footage and and issues that were chronic issues that we're going to have with the signage ordinance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. second all right the motion's been made and seconded all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed same sign so, anything else? Any announcements? No, that's all you have on the agenda. All right. Brent, I don't do announcements. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Meeting adjourned. Thanks.